uh, Mr. R.D. Roberto, he is an entrepreneur, a writer, a best-selling author, and of course, he is also a writing coach, <laughs> right, Kuya R.D.? That's where I actually met him at one of his first um, project author um, workshops. And of course, he is also a pogi husband to Miss Miriam Kiambao, Roberto, and they have two kids, um, Josh and Elijah as well. So Kuya R.D., take it away. Thank you. Thanks, GM. Can you give me also co-hosting rights so I can also share screen? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. How's everybody? Hi, Pin, Ricky, Michelle, Pearl, Maureen. Is that the right pronunciation? Kiwi. Kiwi Yem. Okay. Are you related to Yang? Or Krez, Kathy, and Yem. Okay. The others, how come you're showing your Beautiful. 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 <laughs> Ayan. Sige. Para naman, kasi wala na tayo face to face eh. Tapos, ano, So, anyway, JM, thanks for inviting me and giving me a few minutes or 15 minutes <laughs> to just share uh, uh, a little bit how the topic of my talk is really how writing saved my life. So, I don't know at what stage of life you are in and why you are in this in this group, but there must be a specific reason. So, can I ask you why are you in this um, in this webinar? Can you put in the chat box? And while I start to share my screen, yeah, see, yeah, share naman. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, you don't have to write uh, uh, a whole chapter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see the results of our, okay. Okay, improve writing skills. You saw JM's IG post and got interested. Okay, you want to know more about writing. Okay, you want to ex JM says you want to express express grief through writing. Okay, Ting, your sister in law knows that you like to write. Okay, so all right. Kiwi, you want to make an impact. Okay, whether it's on Instagram or wherever. All right, Michelle. Okay, um, okay. I assume that you're interested in writing as well. Okay. Okay. And Michelle, you want to write a book in the future. Great. Okay. And Pearl, you want to express yourself through writing. Nice. Uh, just curious, has anyone ever read any of my books or are aware of uh, <laughs> my books? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, okay, at least one. So yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you um yes, I so I've written uh, I've written 10 books so far, I think, or 10 or 11. Um and uh, yeah, I've always I've always wanted to be a writer, I guess, but I never realized that God would use writing to actually save my life. And uh how many of you are Curious how writing saved my life. Let me explain. Okay. Well, writing saved my life so that I could experience this um, life in all its fullness, a second chance in family, second chance in life from a person who wanted to end his life, perhaps, and follow his uh, late wife. God gave me this. And God used writing. Uh, for me to really uh, bring me back from, from grief, from mourning into this second, second chapter of my life. I'm 54 years old. I'm a 54-year-old dad of, a, um, of an infant son, of a 12-year-old son, and of a much younger wife. Yeah. 
So even though she's 43 already, or I always tell her she looks forever 21. Yeah, di ba? <laughs> Kahit sarado na yung forever 21, siya hindi magsasara. Okay. But it wasn't like that before. You know, I'll take you back to October 1, 1995. I was um, actually already a writer by this time, and I was an assistant editor in Metro Magazine, writing for that magazine. And uh, the person you see here, of course, is not my current wife right now, but it was my first late wife. Her name was Ting Ting Pilas Linsangan Roberto. She was from Cebu, and <clears throat> she was the love of my life. I met her at the magazine. And... Um, and after a, not whirlwind, but God somehow put us together, even though we were very much opposites. And we got married in October 1, 1995. And we thought that we would spend the rest of our lives together. Okay. Uh, but just a few years later, there was a crisis situation. And uh, Ting Ting was suspected to have bone cancer or leukemia or some kind of disease. So you can see in the pictures, Ivan, like, from this, she lost 40 pounds, uh, she was skin and bones, she was constantly in pain, uh, many symptoms that mimic cancer, but we didn't really know what it was. And because it was one of those diseases that doctors really, really miss a lot. And it turns out that it was systemic lupus. In fact, this Reader's Digest uh, magazine article, she was featured, she was a lead story and uh, yes, she had lupus. She, her mother actually, we found out, died of lupus. Everybody thought she died of bone cancer, but she was diagnosed with SLE or systemic lupus. And by the time she was diagnosed, she was one foot in the door of death, but through hope, encouragement, love, and prayer, she was miraculously healed. God healed her and praise God, you know, I can attest that Jesus really heals. And the, the Whatever damage was reversed and um, minimal medications, we, she started living a second life. We even started another business. You know, my, my life verse became James chapter one, two, three, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be complete, not lacking anything. So this is what I wrote on my mirror, on my desk, and while all these things were happening to my, to my first state wife, I was actually writing in a journal. So, and the writings in my journal became later on fodder material for a book that would later be published. Okay? But in the meantime, we are grateful to be living a second life. Um, this was like three, four years after the, the lupus attacks. And parang wala nangyari, no? we were traveling. Uh, we, are, we went to the Holy Land, we went to Niagara Falls, uh, Egypt, the Dead Sea. Uh, seven years later, finally, it took me seven years to write this book, The Heart of Healing, because the doctor said that if you've passed the seven-year mark, more or less you're out of the woods and you, we could say that you're in remission and you will live a long life. Okay? So I wrote the book and published uh, publisher published The Heart of Healing. You know, and when I was writing this book, uh, looking at my journals and looking at my, my notes, it, it was very cathartic for me. You know, there was healing for me as well, even though it was seven years later. You know, as I was writing, I would find myself <laughs> crying at, the, at my laptop, <clears throat> remembering those times when, when, my, when uh, my first wife was so much in pain. And uh, I was also crying because of God's goodness. So yeah, so, so that book also <clears throat> ministered to a lot of people. We launched a, um, a ministry because of that uh, and talked about the heart of healing um, to hospitals, administrators. We were talking in conferences about God's miracle. And uh, so it not only benefited me, the writing, but many, many other, many, many other people. And Another miracle happened. We had a miracle baby named Joshua, um, <clears throat> who was born to us through the miracle of adoption. Okay. So that's one thing that I hope to write about in the future, uh, the miracle of adoption. So while we were enjoying that phase in our lives as, as parents, um, five years later, okay, actually she was healed 2001, the remission. Later on, 
12 years later, she was back in the hospital, ding, ding, and turns out that um, when, when the test results came back, it was just a normal checkup. Meron na pala siyang stage five systemic lupus. So the lupus came back, but this time mas grave with a vengeance. And in just a matter of a few months, I like to say the thorn was back. If you know Paul's thorn in the flesh, for me, it was this lupus and, and she was in, and my wife was in extreme pain, much more worse than the first time. And you know, one of the things that helped me cope whenever I would see my, my first wife just screaming in pain. There are times that we were not in the hospital, we were together in bed and there's nothing I could do anymore. I just had to go out of the room. And I remember writing this piece to help me, you know, gather myself and just give me peace perhaps. And it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I remember posting this, uh, writing it first on my phone and then posting this on Facebook. And I want to share this piece with you. It's called Whisper Hallelujah to Your Pain. And it goes like this. It says, I believe we are connected by our trials and griefs so much more than our happiness and joys. Is it in our DNA? Are we wired for suffering? Every Sunday as family, we worship at the cross and rejoice and sing praises to the King of Kings who went through far more worse pain, agony, and suffering than anyone. And that is his joyous yet pain-stricken crown and glory. The Father allowed it, yet we conveniently forget that. The Father denied his son's plea for relief and escape. He said, oh, my Father, if possible, let this cup of suffering pass from me. Why? All for love all for love, and we are so much better off because of that. Death, as Jesus gloriously rose from grief, pain, and suffering, so shall we, from, as Jesus gloriously rose from grief, pain, and suffering, <clears throat> so shall we who believe. Then the great separator will be our final connector to every family member who believes. And then every tear shed in this life, every pain-filled sigh, every angry why will be answered in a blink of an eye. Eternity, love, an eternal embrace with Jesus. And then pain, grief, and heartache, we shall know no more. So for now, whisper. Choose to whisper hallelujah. Whisper hallelujah to those achy bones, the fatty liver, the leaky kidneys, the clogged heart, the toxic blood, the fooled immune system. Whisper hallelujah to the body that rots away with each new day. Whisper hallelujah in the hospital hallways. Whisper hallelujah in the crowded elevator of bad news faces. Whisper hallelujah at the ICU. Whisper hallelujah at the morgue. Whisper hallelujah to the ear of grief and pain. Just hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And <clears throat> usually many times when I, when I read this, I still am... Uh, I still tear up a lot, and until now, sometimes my the, the hair on my my neck and my arms just stand up, remembering that moment when I wrote this. and And when I read this, you know, I think I think to myself, did I write this? But I'm, it's not in my powers to write this. So I urge you, you know, when you when you are when you have that urge, when the for me, when it's the, the Holy Spirit takes hold of you and you know, just write. So I wrote this. And for me, after writing this, it just calmed me down. You know, it, it, it was like God and I were, were having this deep conversation through this writing. And um, this piece until now speaks to many people. And I hope it spoke to you as well and encouraged you as well uh, to keep on writing in pain and in grief. And at that exact moment, don't wait for the grief to go away and subside first and then I will write. No use that grief and use that pain at that moment to write words that will heal you perhaps and that will heal others once you share it. So I shared this the next, that uh, once I wrote this on my cell phone, uh, Blackberry pack on them, okay? And, and then I published it on, on Facebook. And uh, the next day I had to bring Ting Ting to the ICE, to, um, to Asian hospital. And my way of coping every day while I was making bantai, I had my, I had my Blackberry and I, 
I miss that BlackBerry kasi parang may keyboard yun, di ba? So parang it's like you're typing. And every day I would, I started counting the days, you know, day one, day two, and day one I would, I would write on, 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 on notes and then I would post it on Facebook. And for me, it was my way of coping, but I didn't know that it was actually ministering to many, many people who were suffering from the same kind of grief or pain. And um, again, so uh, that's what I did. So every day I would make sure that I would write something. And there were days, honestly, that, um, that parang sabi ko, Lord, ayoko na magsulat. Parang, this is too personal, but God would speak to me and say, you know, this is your mission field. I, I gave this to you for a reason. And so every day I would, I would write. Whether it was one or two paragraphs, I would make sure that I wrote every day. Yun. So these are just some of the samples that, that I, 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 I posted. Uh, yeah, so I'm on day 27. Um, and I'm happy that I captured all of this. Yeah, especially with my, my son, Joshua, who was that five years old at that time was my, I wrote a lot about what he was going through as well. And there's one particular post on day 31 that I, I really, really like um, about a change of perspective that when I was writing, you know, it, writing helped me change my perspective. And I'll just read an excerpt here. It says, thanking God for the blessings of being in this refinery called the ICU. Yes, Lord, I see you. You know, when I was writing, I see you. I see you in the midst of the darkness and sickness in this place. There is joy to be found here. Thank you, Lord, for refining us and giving us suits of asbestos called grace. Then I would read my Bible, and then, you know, a Bible a verse would usually just pop up, and then I would place it there. And exactly in verse, sometimes it's the verse for the day. And this was the verse for the day that time in Isaiah 48 10 it says, See, I have refined you, though not as silver, I've tested you in the furnace of affliction. So writing was my companion, writing was my, um, you could call it my crutch, uh, writing was my, my pill, my pain reliever. Uh, and all throughout, it was with me. All throughout those days, umapunda dun sa day 57. <clears throat> That final day on January 5, 2013, when Ting Ting whispered to me, Uwi na tayo. And I said, yes, uwi ka na. Uwi ka na kay Lord. And, um, and that day was just a day of celebration. As, as I told everybody that this is a day that looks like Ting Ting would be called by the Lord. Um, I asked the doctors, if they were in my shoes, would they call already family? And they did. Um, tell me the truth. And so, yeah, so it was that day. And I remember um, just gathering people, gathering friends. And I remember Ting Ting reserving her last strength to open her eyes just to see my son, our son, Joshua. Um, and when I told her that your son is here. And then after that, I felt that really God wanted me to spend time with her alone. And when everybody went out, I just climbed on to bed, her bed, and then cradled her in my arms, and then she she uh, just breathed, breathed her last breath. And and um, you know, it was a mixture of when I was told that she had terminal expired. Eh. <laughs> Sir, na expired na yung wife. Parang producto yung parang. <laughs> no, my wife did not expire. She just went home, and. Um, and that's it. That's that's what happened. Um, and all and after that, after that, you know, my uh, I continued writing from the first day of her wake until the funeral, and then I continued a, a couple of more uh, weeks until I decided to just go on a Facebook fast to write my book. And if there are um, you know, lessons that, that, um, that are to be taken from this. I don't know how this speaks to you or how this ministers to you, but, you know, without trying to sound cliche is if you, if, if you're in that moment of, 
of you know I, of you know those moments will never come again and those thoughts and words will never come again and i plead to you to capture those words you know if if i would try to re remember what happened during, during those times in 2012 2013 Lana, i wouldn't be able I, in in high, i wouldn't be able to write uh, those pieces and my one of my next writing projects is is uh, a book called a good grief where i'm trying to what i'm doing is I, i'm copy and pasting all of those uh, facebook posts and compiling everything and trying to edit them and put some sense and and put some commentary perhaps um, because I see that a lot of people were touched by those entries and a lot of people were also um, were also wanting it until now so it's hard to go back on Facebook and then try to look back and you, know, you can't really send a link and you know she's so I'm trying to put them together in one book so so yeah so if there's one lesson that that I want to leave with you is really that capture the moment write those words that God has placed in your heart, those, even if it's very raw, don't be afraid to wear your <clears throat> heart on your sleeve and, and expose yourself and be transparent because your greatest hurt could be your greatest ministry. Your greatest hurt could be your greatest ministry and the ministry of the word um, is very um, sometimes underestimated, but never underestimate the power of a word. And especially when it's written in that time of grief or maybe in that time of happiness and joy. So that's all I have to share for now, uh, JM. And uh, uh, thank you for giving me those uh, this time. And if you want to join Pala Project Author <laughs> in the future, it's just simple. Just go to projectauthor.com or PM me on Facebook and then uh, I'll, I will guide you in a way. We're starting a new session, uh, the one that JM joined on January 7th. Yeah, so you have time. Okay. All right, Thank JM. I know I have... Thank uh, you very much. <laughs> so I don't know if there's time for one or two questions. Uh, Do you still have time, Kuya RD? Yeah, I'm checking my other laptop because my other laptop is the other event. So. Okay. <laughs> I was telling them now you're you're a busy man, especially tonight, because you have <laughs> another um event as well. But Kuya Ardi, thank you very very much. That's very inspiring, and I hope that motivated actually a lot of us to just draw those um write those raw moments. Just like what Kuya already mentioned earlier, even in the form of Facebook post or Instagram post, or even on your journals as well. So, do you still have time, Kuya already, for? <laughs> yes. Oh, ang hindi pa sila mawabalik, so okay lang. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. No. Maybe one or two. Yeah. So maybe you have any questions? Take advantage of this time because the next time that you will see Kuya already is, I think, at project author if any one of you are interested on that please follow him also at rd roberto um, for facebook and on instagram and of course i think that's projectauthor.com right kuya rd so they yes. can know the details about it also so maybe yes. i can share the details as well to them um after yes. this workshop or write shop okay so do you have any Re reaction or questions let, let me ask them a question what will you what what is god speaking to you what will you do after hearing this okay yeah you can unmute your mics or you can write it oh. there's a message here from tin also who you already yeah mm, you started writing and then you stopped yeah, I can understand. Okay. Maybe Kuya Ardi, I can ask a question. Um, because one of the biggest things also that um us, you know, it keeps us from writing is fear, right? So mm. how do we solve that um that obstacle when it comes to writing? Okay. Um, usually it's fear, there are many types of fear, um, fear of rejection or fear of being ridiculed or fear of 
not being adequate enough or fear that your writing skills um, are still too raw. So maraming classing ganun. But I remember my mentor, it never, it never got erased from my mind. He told me, you know what fear means, RD? He said, fear stands for uh, false expectations appearing real. False expectations appearing real. And many times we have those expectations or mga akala na akala natin uh, ganito magiging reaction ng ganyan kaya natatakot tayo. But yun, if you write for, for me, if you write for an audience of one, if you write, you know, if, for me as a, as a Christian, if you write and it's just between you and the Lord, you know, and then you share it, you know, what is there to fear? Try it, you know. <laughs> and if you fail, you know, failure is just another uh, stepping stone to you know, success, as they say. So, okay, matakot. Um, yeah, I, 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 I was fearful before when I was first assigned to write. By I remember the first time I wrote an article, and I was fearful that it would be ridiculed by my editor. Pero what I did was I, I wrote the article as if I was writing a love letter to my girlfriend. So, 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 so just write, you know, um, bravery is, is doing something despite the presence of, of fear. Ayun. That's a good one. Si Ayun. Ah, writing challenge down yan might not be creative in nature. Okay. Ang hirap to be motivated. Tama. Ako, hanggang ngayon, hirap pa rin ako. Once I start writing, uh, okay, pero ang hirap mag-start to write. Kasi ang daming, daming distractions, diba? Ang daming ibang kailangan gawin. And sometimes it's ourselves who put down our writing. Napa, ay, sa kanya yan, sa kanya yan. Kasi marami pa mas importante. And that applies to me as well. You know, in my to-do notebook, you know, even if I have writing appointments to myself, I just set aside the appointment. I, I just, sa kanya yan, I'll write another time. So, yun, yun. so it's, it's really hard to be motivated. But uh, as I teach in Project Author, I, I have to walk the talk. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, 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 yeah, I share a lot of techniques of how to start writing and the discipline of writing every day. So, yun, that's a whole session. Maraming, maraming, maraming ways. Yun. Diba, JM? Yes. <laughs> and as Miss Grace Chong, I think um, Kuya RD yeah. said also, just write. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah. So, Kuya RD, thank you. A lot of tips there, ha? Huh? Like, you yes. really need to be um, intentional also um, for you to be motivated when it comes to writing. That's what I also got from you, from what you just yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. Pero during that time of, you know, th those moments when, when, when the grief comes, when the pain comes, you know, that's, that's the moment when you should write. Kasi... Think of think of the pen as as your lifeline, you know, from God, and it just the healing just flows from the pen as you write, and even if it doesn't, if it doesn't come out anywhere and publish, whether online, Facebook, or wherever, in the blog or in the book, okay, lang at least na ilabas mo, and then maybe one day in the future when you come back and and read what you've written. You can say to yourself, oh, ganda nito ah. Ako ba nasulat na ito? Pwede itong part ng libro ko. Pwede itong part ng, ng, ng blog in the future. So, so, so that's why it's important to have that notebook. Capture, capture the moment and the words that got a space in your heart. I agree. Kuya Ardi, there's another question here. If it's still okay with your time? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. I, I am on the so maybe just one, one more question, Kuya Ardi. Okay. Um, did you sure. ever get angry with God because of what he gave to you, the season of pain? During your season of pain, did you ever get, got 
angry with God during that time? Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if he's angry or tampo or you know I even blackmailed God. Oh Lord, if you don't, if you don't heal my wife. Paano na yung reputation mo? Kasi di ba, sinulat na natin itong librong Heart of Healing together. And we talked about, you know, how you healed my wife. And if you don't heal her and she dies, ako, parang, you know, when I was saying that, I was actually prostate and I was crying out to God. So it was a, it was a mixture of tampo, anger, and and pleading, and makaawa. So, yeah, all those emotions. So that's, that's okay. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. In those moments, isulat mo rin kay, kay God yun. There are many things that I've written that did not get published or I did not allow to get published mm -hmm. because they are very personal. They were like David crying out in the Psalms to, to God. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's actually one of my inspirations, Kuya R.D., to write like David. <laughs> Pero mali ata yung pinag-pray ko. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that prayer comes pain and all of those things. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I think I need to be back. So, uh... <laughs> before you leave, Kuya RD, let's unmute ourselves naman and give him a round of applause as a appreciation for your time. Yay, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kuya RD. Thank you. Thank you. God bless thank you more. You. Very good time to JR. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh, ikaw ko muna picture na yan. Okay ba yan? Although mga five years ago pa yan. Okay lang. <laughs>